Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are looking at two different engines, but they are similar in the sense that they are both very simple and cleverly designed, and neither of them uses a fuel source. They don't use petrol or gas or even water to run. So how do they run? Let's have a look. This is called a Crooks radiometer. And this, like the other engine, works on thermal energy. It's not using light like solar power does. It's using the heat coming from the light source to power it. If I put up an LED light next to it, it doesn't really have any effect. It's spinning at the moment because there's a much bigger lamp off to the side here. This LED light isn't having any effect because it's not really producing much heat. This light over here though is producing much more heat so let's put it up next to that and see how much faster it can spin. We've moved it closer to the light bulb and the light bulb's pumping out a fair bit of heat and that's what's causing those fins to spin. To really explain what's happening here, you have to get deep into physics and talk about things like thermal transpiration and radiation pressure, but I'm going to try and explain it as simply as I can. In that air around the fins, it's actually a partial vacuum, which means a lot of the air has been taken out. There are still some air particles in there though. And those air particles, when they're heated up, they are given energy and they move around a lot more and hit the walls and hit the surfaces around them with more force. The black fins are absorbing more heat and they're getting hotter. So the particles around them have more energy and the particles are hitting those black fins a lot harder and more often and with more force than the particles next to the white fins. And this is really concentrated around the edges of the fin rather than the centers of the fin. So because the particles near the black sides are more energized, they are hitting the black fins with more force and cause the fins to move in the direction of the black fins. This can only really work when there's a partial vacuum inside this glass bulb because the air particles, if there was more air in there, the air particles would be colliding with each other rather than the fins. And also because if there was more air in there, there'd be more air resistance and the fins wouldn't move around as easily as they do now. This is different to solar power because with solar power, that's converting heat into electrical energy. It's creating an electrical current. This does not use any electricity at all. It's converting heat energy directly into kinetic energy. This is one of my favorite inventions. It's called a Stirling engine, and it was invented in the early 1800s to compete with the steam engine. It also uses thermal energy to power it, specifically the difference between temperatures. So we have a top plate here and a bottom plate, and the bigger the temperature difference between these two plates, the faster it spins. So let's see how it works. I've got a mug of hot water here, and if I put the Stirling engine on top of it, the steam is going to heat up this bottom plate. And the air inside, just on the other side of that plate, will start to expand and push this displacer upwards. So let's give it a bit of time for that bottom plate to really heat up. It's been a few minutes now and that's given the bottom plate enough time to heat up. So let's give it a bit of a push and see what happens. Just like with a regular car engine, the Stirling engine uses a piston that moves up and down and this rotates a flywheel. As the air in the bottom of this chamber heats up, it expands and it causes this displacer to rise and that brings up the piston. The momentum of the flywheel pushes the gas from the warm area of this chamber into the cooler area where the gas then cools down and contracts and it pulls the piston down with it which pushes the displacer down. Because the air in the bottom of the chamber is being heated up, it expands and the process repeats again and it just cycles through. If you remember at the start, I said that it works on a temperature difference and the bigger the temperature difference between the top plate and the bottom plate, the faster it spins. So these cubes are made of stone and I've had them in the freezer for a long time and they're really, really cold. So I'll put them on the top plate and so the top plate will be really cold. The bottom plate still has that hot steam. So there's a huge temperature difference 
and we'll see that the wheel spins a lot faster now because there's a much bigger temperature difference between these two plates. And that's it for today. Both of these are really good examples of renewable energy sources, particularly the Stirling engine. A lot of money is going into researching that at the moment and some big companies are really starting to implement that. So both of these models are available on eBay. They're pretty affordable. So if you found this interesting, definitely buy some and check them out for yourself. Thanks for watching.